In this diorama, they're illustrating a trilobite, a cephalopod, not only cephalopod, a sea scorpion. But what I'm, we're focusing on are the bryozoans. Road cuts are wonderful. This represents a road or a highway. They'll uh, terrace out the hills. It's also called a bench. There's usually not grass growing in these sections, and you can walk along. And it's all limestone and fossil rich uh, fossils eroding out. In, when they were alive, they were standing upright. When they died, they would fall over like a tree, like tree logs, and they would break. Um, usually being buried and, and fossilized, they would uh, snap by the pressures of the earth. This illustration is representing the bryzoans that are alive, and the pr ones of previous ages are underneath them. So layer upon layer, of the reefs, they just keep growing one atop one another. Sometimes they're buried by storms, or as in today's oceans, you'll see uh, one coral life form growing right on top of another, and the coral just keeps growing and growing and growing. The old ones and dead ones are on the bottom. New ones have grown up on top of them and replaced them. It just keeps growing, and the seafloor just becomes uh, shallower and shallower. Uh, in this case, in the, during the Ordovician, it was slowly building up, you know, millions of years upon millions of years. And the Double A Highway is over 100 miles long. I'm in the Cold Spring, Kentucky part. Many little road, many little hill cuts where they cut through the hill to lay down the Double A Highway. And we're standing on top of a very big hill. This is one, this has two tiers to it. And uh, at the very top of this, there is fossilized bryozoan reefs. Bryzoa is similar to coral. It's a smaller species. Bryozoans are still alive today. Bryozoans weren't much bigger than a man's hand, most of them. Some of them got a little bit larger, almost the size of uh, cabbage. Um, but anyway, this shows they're usually the most common form. There's thousands of different species. The most common way they look is broken bits and pieces. And I'm going to give you a visual sample here of what these look like. All the broken bits and pieces. And all along this top layer, it's a very rich layer of broken bits and pieces of bryzoan. And this, this is an articulated uh, patch. That is, they're still in their lifelike position. This piece will go into this piece, this piece goes into this piece, um, this piece will go into this piece. Uh, so they have weathered out, this piece goes into this piece, into this piece. They've weathered out, but they haven't scattered. Most of these other ones have weathered out so long that they've scattered. But here, this piece goes into this piece, goes into this piece. You get the idea is that they're articulated. They're in their lifelike position, but they're broken. The upper layers of dirt and sediments have crushed it over the millions of years of it being buried. So it's broken like China, and these can be recollected and glued back together. There's yet another articulated one. Let me give it a little help so you can see it better. There you go. So here, they're scattered all around. This gives you an idea what they look like. Some of them only stood up a few inches off the ground and just V-shaped out. Uh, they grew from a central point and grew out. And they're just like little twigs growing on the seafloor. These are Ordovician age fossils. They're 450 million years old on average. For every uh, centimeter in height of these uh, limestone cliffs usually represents about a thousand years. And here's a very big patch of uh, bryzone reef, maybe about five feet by ten feet across. I'll show you the whole area right there. But let's get a close up. I want you to see all the little pieces.
usually considered one of the more boring fossils are everywhere, very abundant. Not too many people get excited about them because they're so dirt common in the Ordovician rock layers. But they're fragmented. If you take the time, oh, this is unusually nice. Look at this. Put all the holes in that one. That's neat. But if you take the time, you can actually uh, glue these back together. And what, what's unique about these bryzoans is they lived and they grew and they died here. They grew up like a mini forest. And now we find all the pieces. What I do, if I find an isolated patch, which I've just done, with only maybe, I'd say maybe 30 pieces, I'll pick up all these pieces and glue them back together, and chances are very strong that this is of the same individual and they'll glue back together very nicely. But you have to really try hard to get every single little piece. Okay, these have all been collected. They're in a bag to take home. Here's another patch of bryzoans. This is maybe three feet by four feet. It's a rainy day, so everything's really wet. Just hundreds of them here. We're going to go out to this part of the mud. You'll be able to a little more contrast. See all the bits and pieces of the bryzoans broken. Just laying out on top of the uh, sediments. On top of these terraced hills, the uh, sediments erode out, leaving all these bryozoans just sitting here. You see this? See how this piece goes into this piece? I want you to see the break on this. Some people have written into me claiming that I just glue random pieces together. That's not the case because the seams match up perfectly. And you can't fake this. That is, one piece will only fit into the next if it is a correct match. We just filmed from up there at the very top of the hill. And again, this is visual backup for the first video. And the main message was these bryozoan reefs grew the Ordovician fossils during the Ordovician period. This is a 60 million year period. And these bryozoans growing on the seafloor, they grow, they get buried, and new generations upon new generations, the ocean, the sea bottom would get, you get uh, stacked one on top of another. Every one of these uh, sticking, this entire tier is just filled with bryozoans all over it. So this was a very, very rich bryozoan reef. Here the pieces are a little bit smaller now, a little bit finer. I would not even attempt to glue these back together, they're so small. You can see the texture of all the bryozoan reefs in every one of these spots. It's just an amazing thing which we take for granted here in Cincinnati amongst Cincinnati's world famous fossils. Some of the rocks and the rocks have them uh, stuck within them as well. But here on the ground they're all loose. Old habits and old addictions die hard and I am definitely addicted to fossil hunting and gluing back together bryzoans like a fool. I've collected far more than I can ever re-glue in my life, but I just can't stop myself. Anyway. Stop it. 
Here's another articulated one, and the pieces are so big I can't help but collect this and glue it, try to glue it back together. Wonderful. Here I am at the very bottom of the hill, and I'm just going to show you real quick that the bryozoan reefs are even here as well. At least all the broken indications of all the bryozoans. They're at the bottom, the middle, and the very top of this hill. So that's, uh, what would that be, about 70 feet of sediment that you just saw me climb. Here's the bottom, first tier, and then the second tier is up there.